Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating protocols at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is imminent, more imminent today than it was yesterday, one day closer to seeing our groom. That is Tootsie in the background watching and waiting with us for the appearing of our Lord and Savior, our blessed hope. Um, I was not gonna do a video today, so I thought anyway, but I don't know if you guys have been feeling like down or discouraged or, um, you know, I, I have been feeling that in my spirit that not only myself, but all of us, that the body of Christ is feeling a heaviness and a weightiness in our spirit. And I feel like the Lord wants us to know that his appearing is imminent, okay? And I know that a lot of us say this and we say this and that he's coming soon and very soon, but the rapture is imminent. The rapture, the rapture is, this channel is to locate and educate prodigals at risk. Those are once saved, always saved is the gospel. That is, if you have departed, if you have left in, in, on misunderstanding and you've gotten saved and you've left the traditional brick and mortar church but you got saved born again you can't become unborn again okay this is what that channel is to locate those prodigals and tell you that you know what Jesus never left you and the traditional church may have told you that you need to perform in order to please Jesus that once you were saved, once you were born again, you needed to do something to maintain those works. That is a lie from the pit of hell, okay? So you went out there and wandered as I did. Um, my testimony is the first test, uh, first video on this channel. Um, if you're a new subscriber, and if you are a new subscriber, um, I welcome you and welcome to the family. And I pray for, and I love everyone on this channel family, and I pray for you and your prodigal. We walk by faith and not by sight because walking by sight is very treacherous these days because the enemy is out for blood here. And um, this is spiritual warfare, but, but God. We know greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. But anyway, this channel is for prodigals. And um, so if you know and love a prodigal but can't seem to reach them, please share the channel. But for those who are not saved in these final moments of the end of days, this is the end of the dispensation of grace. That trumpet is about to sound. And the rapture is where Jesus Christ appears in those clouds. That trumpet sounds. The dead in Christ rise first. And we, this generation, I believe, who are alive and remain, are caught up with them, harpazo in the clouds and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words and encourage one another as we see the day approaching. And we need so much to encourage one another, um, especially now because the enemy just wants to oppress us and discourage us with any little thing that he can. Um, any little thing, don't allow that. Stay armored up, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Put on your full armor, saints, because we are in the final moments. And I'm, I mean, I'm usually very happy and cheerful and carefree. And, you know, I have been feeling this heaviness. And when I was in prayer this morning, the Lord told me it's like a blanket effect across the body of Christ right now. And he does not want us to feel that. He wants us to be as a bride at, that we are rejoicing that we are going to see our bridegroom soon, very soon, and look into his eyes and look into his face. So whatever you're feeling or experiencing um, in your life right now, know that it's only temporary and start praising. You know, that yoke of bondage will be lifted with praise. Put on the spirit of praise for the heaviness, you know, be joyful and praise the Lord. And even when you don't feel like it, okay, 
just put on the spirit of praise, you know, just praise him and thank him for everything that you can think to thank him for. And before you know it, you know, your soul has to come in alignment with your spirit, your emotions, your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's what your soul is. But your spirit is in charge. Remember that. And your spirit and your soul will always fight. Read Galatians. Your spirit and your soul will always fight each other. You know, and knowing that ahead of time, you have, you know, one up on it. So every day, every moment that you get up to fight this battle, know that your flesh is going to fight you, even though you're born again. So those who are not born again, I want to tell you that we are in the final moments before the greatest tribulation known to man. And that is the, tribu the tribulation, not just sorrows, not just pain, not just earthquakes and hurricanes. Read the chapter of Revelation after chapter three and four. Read the book of Revelation. Okay, the church is not here after the fourth chapter. The church, the bride of Christ is not here. We are raptured. We are with Jesus Christ after the fourth chapter of Revelation. Okay, so what's going to happen is horrific, and it is being set up right now. So I want to share the gospel with you before I, before I share what the Lord put on my heart for today. Um, if you are not saved, born again, we are all sinners in need of a Savior. Jesus Christ came and died, lived a sinless life, and died a bloody death so that we could be right with a holy God. He didn't deserve to die. He was a sinless, spotless lamb of God who from the foundations of this earth was spotless and was crucified for us because we couldn't do it. Our good works could not earn us a spot in heaven. Regardless of how hard we tried, none of us could be good. Okay, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not some of us, all of us. The Bible says that we are conceived in our mother's womb in sin, in the condition of sin. Okay, so we need a remedy for that condition, that disease called sin. And Jesus Christ became that remedy for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. But not all of us will be saved because we'll believe the liar, Satan. There is an enemy. There is a liar. And he'll tell you that God doesn't love you, that if, if God were real, why would all these things be happening? Everything is unfolding for him just as the Bible says it would unfold in the end. The stage is set. The stage is set. And we who are born again can see it. It's like a curtain. Okay. We can see through the curtain at the furniture being shifted around. We can see everything being put in place. And that's why we're trying to warn you who are not saved. Get saved. That's why there's an urgency in our spirit. Become born again. Know Jesus Christ as your Savior. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. That is the simple gospel, friend. We don't work or earn our salvation. Regardless of how hard you try or what you do, you cannot make God any more proud of you than uh, what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And if you don't have the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ in your life and for your sins, you can't get into heaven. The only way to the Father is through the Son. So how do you get born again? Okay, so it's very easy. God made it very easy. Churches make it difficult. Religion makes it difficult. Religion tries to get to God. God got to man by becoming man. Okay, so, and erasing our sin for us, past, present, and future sin. So A is to simply admit that we are sinners in need of a Savior. And 
like I said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says, B is to simply believe that Jesus Christ is this world's only Savior and your personal Savior for the forgiveness of your personal sins that you just confess that you have. And C, call upon his name. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, not some. Jesus Christ is Lord. And once you are born again, you become part of the family of God, sons and daughters of the Most High God. And he doesn't abort his children. He doesn't kick you out of the house, regardless of what people say, that you can lose your salvation, that, you know, God knows our heart. And he knows why we've walked away from certain churches or certain people. God knows our heart. It doesn't negate the fact that our spirit became born again at a certain point in time. And God knows those are his, whose are his. God knows his children. Okay, so even though I was gone and wandering for 10 long years, the Bible says that God, everything that the enemy meant for harm, God will turn around and use it for good. Everything. So don't let anything in your past shame you or make you feel like, God doesn't want anything to do with you because of those sins. He died for those sins. But the enemy likes to get in our head and say, ah, yeah, what's God going to do with you now? You know, that one, you know, that sin, that was too much. You blew it there. No, no, don't ever let the enemy lie to you like that. That's why he's called a liar. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. One thing he cannot destroy, one thing he cannot take is our eternal security. That is sealed at the moment that we become saved, at the moment we become born again. So if you're not saved, I would urge you, urge you to get saved now before the seven year tribulation, because you don't want to be here. You don't want to be here and you don't have to be here. All right, so I want to read to you from my Bible in the fifth chapter of Revelation. The Lamb takes the scroll. And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. No seals have been opened. No trumpets have been blown yet. Okay, so don't let anyone lie to you. We're not in the tribulation. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out from all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. That's the father. So you see that he stood, stood a lamb. Jesus sat at the right hand of the father when he was finished, when he was resurrected. He sat at the right hand of the Father. This said, he, there stood a lamb. Okay, that is pretty awesome. Um, now, when he had taken the scroll, the, now listen very carefully, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us. Who's us? That's us. We're there already. Okay, this is Revelation chapter 5. Us is the church. Okay, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of the tribe, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us, us, 
kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under earth and such are as in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne. Now he's sitting on the throne. And to the Lamb who's sitting on the throne, the Father sitting on the throne, and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen, and the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Who are the 24 elders? The church. We. We sang that new song to him before he opened anything because the Apostle John saw in Revelation chapter 4, heard as a trumpet, okay, here in chapter 4, um, as a trumpet. And these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here, come up here. And I will show you many things which must take place after this. So the church is already there before Jesus opens anything. So be encouraged that we are not appointed to wrath. I felt led to share that. I was, the Lord had that in my private time today. Um, so there's a lot going on right now. We know that. So all of you who are born again, all of us who are born again, we know that, um, you know, Israel became a nation in 1948, so began the clock. And all the Jews have returned to the land for the most part. Um, you know, that clock began to tick. And, you know, Israel is God's prophetic timeline. Keep your eyes on Israel if you want to see what God's doing. And God's next event on the prophetic timeline is the rapture of the church. We won't be here. The tribulation is ensuing right now, right after the rapture. And it's being set up. I mean, okay, so what do you think the Great Reset is? That is New World Order. That's what my great-grandmother talked about fit 40 years ago. Okay, New World Order. They just have a new name for it, the Great Reset. Okay, and uh, so yeah, so they and they just found the largest seizure of fentanyl found in New York in, in a Lego box. You know, fentanyl is killing our children. Why are they letting all of these people across the border? Because there's an agenda. You got to understand that everything that is happening right now, there's an agenda to create chaos. Okay, and that chaos, what just came across my feed um, is kind of crazy. This would affect me because <laughs> I sure do say what I feel and feel what I, you know. Uh, but what just came across my uh, feed was that uh, there's a policy for PayPal, a new PayPal policy that appears to authorize them to pull money from users' accounts who spread misinformation, oh my gosh, effective November 3rd of certain kind of groups and orientation of race, religion, gender, misinformation. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's the lie. They're believing the lie. We know the truth. The moment we became born again, we were transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. They're the ones that are believing the lie. Okay, not us. We're not believing the lie. I mean, when we look at some of these TV programs, I mean, what is a woman? 
my goodness, what is a woman? Or some of these people, transvestites, preaching in church? Okay, we are in the last days, guys. We are as in the days of Noah, right now. Okay, we're in overtime, actually. And Jesus is coming to rapture his bride. The Bible says that in the last days, righteous people will walk getting more righteous, the book of Daniel says, and evil people will wax even more evil. You know why we're righteous? It's because of the blood of the lamb. Our righteousness is its filthy rags to God. We don't have any righteousness. When the Holy Spirit moves in and takes up residence, he's the one that inspires us to do right. He's the one that counsels us and shows us where our past affected us here and shows us, no, don't do that. You know, this is right. That's right. Because we don't know right from wrong. We don't know. God is good. Jesus said only God is good. Okay, we don't know where we were sinning before the Holy Spirit moved in. Okay, so, and, okay, so, and this AI that's happening. I watched Jan Markell's um, last video, um, and I would encourage any of you to watch it. And on it was Jared Kushner and Elon Musk. And I said this in my last video also, um, if any of you watched it, um, talking about transhumanism and uh saying that they would be the last, we would be the last generation of people living and they would be the first generation of those living immortal, all right? That would explain in the book of Revelation why people are wishing to die but can't when all this stuff happens in the book of Revelation. They're crying, God, please let me die because somehow they've you know, taking this, whatever this transhumanism is going to be taking place. Um, I don't know what it is, and we won't know what it is because we're going to be raptured. But, um, yeah, they speak of being the first generation of immortals, and um, that's just really weird. That's just really weird. And Klaus Schwab and uh, Yuval, isn't this crazy? Noah Harari. That his name is Noah is very weird. Um, they are, I don't know who the Antichrist is and I don't really care, but that's the spirit of Antichrist people. That is definitely the spirit of Antichrist. And, you know, um, Harari talks about tracking, tracking everywhere we go underneath our skin. Hello, can anybody say Mark of the Beast? Talks about that in Revelation 2. Familiarize yourself with the book of Revelation because that's where we are. That's where we are. We are living a Bible story. Okay, we are, whether you believe it or not, you need to believe it because you're living it. Okay, so everything that's happening, the convergence of things that's happening, the blowing up of the Nord Stream uh, pipeline. Uh, yeah, spe oh, speaking of blowing up, Putin... Um, Putin's favorite bridge was just blown up in Crimea. Um, the global elites are taking over, uh, putting underground bunkers, and let's not forget about the hurricanes. Hurricane Ian, I live in Florida, and I please continue to pray for all the victims of Hurricane Ian. And we live in the Panhandle, so we weren't touched by it, thank God, because um, we went through Hurricane Michael. We weren't touched by that either. It was five miles away from us, but um, we continue to pray for the victims of Hurricane Ian. And we know that the convergence of all of these hurricanes and earthquakes and <clears throat> everything that's happening, the fires and all that, this is not climate change, folks. This is not climate change. And I'd be one of the ones that they say is spreading false information. They say $2,500 you got to pay. That PayPal thing, you got to pay up to $2,500 for spreading false information. Hmm. That's called fear mongering. That's taking our rights, our freedom of speech away from us. Okay. Calling it false information. Okay. So all of these things that are happening, Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, but he was speaking to his disciples when he, when they said, how are we going to know? 
when the end is. And when Jesus was speaking of this, he was speaking of his second coming. The tri- after the tri- When the tribulation happens, okay, he was speaking of his second coming. The rapture happens before that. So how much more so the, the rapture of the church is going to happen if all of these things are happening now? This is like a preview of what's going to happen in the tribulation. This is nothing compared to what's going to happen in the tribulation. Nothing. Um, and yeah, Putin threatening to go nuclear. How's that? I mean, how much more evidence do you need if you're unsaved, to know that we are in the final moments of the end of days. That is the end of the dispensation called grace. Ask God, he'll show you. Ask him. Plead with him. Say, you know, my heart, I don't know. Just show me. Show my heart where I'm wrong. And I'm willing to be willing. Show me. And... Jesus, I believe. I want to believe. And I believe that you're my Savior. He'll show you. He will show you. God is faithful. He is faithful. Just don't deny him. Do not deny him. Believe that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. And call upon his name. And he is faithful to save you. Right where you're at. You don't have to do anything but believe. Don't let anyone lie to you or tell you you have to do A, B, C, and D, fill in the blank to do, to get here, here, and there. You don't. Jesus is your ticket. The only way to the Father is through the Son, not Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, fill in the blank. No other way to the Father but through the Son. Okay, so listen. And listen, you know, Sometimes we can't see spiritually until that veil is lifted from us. Those of us who are walking in the light and can see what's behind that curtain, we can see the furniture being shifted around. We can see the new world order being put in place. We can see the global elites. We can see that only because we have spiritual eyes to see. That's because Jesus lit our spirit. The Bible says that the spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. So it's like when we're born, we're born spiritually dead, right? So it's like we have a candle. We're all born with a candle, unlit, okay? And so when we become, because we're born into the condition of sin, we're in conception born into the condition of sin. So we're born again into the condition of Christ's righteousness. So when we become born again, that candle gets lit. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. So even when we walk out of step with Christ, we are in Christ, seated at the right hand of God, in Christ, never to be taken out of Christ, regardless of where we have fallen. Okay, I fell pretty far and pretty hard but God okay know that God is faithful to meet you where you are if you're his child and if you're not become his child become his child today do not wait he will lift that veil from your eyes break every shackle every addiction everything that you're in he will break it he's the deliverer as well as his as our Savior, our healer, he heals those wounds from our past that we don't even know that is causing us to be in addiction and making poor decisions. He knows our heart. He knows why we make those choices. He knows our heart and he loves us beyond anything we can ask, think, or ever imagine. And what he is waiting for us, the Bible says that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. So, you know, the Abraham Accords, I don't know, I believe that something's going to make them stronger, just as Daniel 9.24, read Daniel 9.24, you know, familiarize yourself with the ninth book, of, um, Dan, Daniel, the ninth chapter also, I was reading that at work the other night, and 
um, just so encouraging. And, and God will show you that we are, we are in the final moments. We are in the final moments. Um, you don't want to be, you don't want to be one second after the rapture saying, you know what? I, I wish I listened to that crazy lady. I wish it with the dog in the background, or I wish I listened to this other person that I heard on YouTube. You know, we're not on here to become YouTube famous, or we're not on here, um, to get subscribers or likes. We're on here to reach you because Jesus loves you and doesn't want you to go through this wrath. You're not appointed to wrath if you belong to Jesus Christ because he took that wrath on the cross. The wrath of God was poured out upon Jesus Christ for you and me. As I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So everyone his name who has ever been born is written in the book of life but there is something called the lamb's book of life and when you're born again when your spirit becomes lit your name is written in the lamb's book of life and you want your name to be written in the lamb's book of life trust me trust me so this is out of my poetic justice the spirit and the bride say come and that is what the Holy Spirit is saying in these final moments of the end of days. Don't wait. Don't be foolish. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Come now unto Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, for nothing impure can ever approach the holiness of Father's throne. The wedding of the Lamb has come. His bride has been made clean. Be prepared to behold very soon what I have never seen. Come nigh unto Jesus Christ, for the time is drawing nigh when all of creation will bow to him and take that final sigh. His voice is a voice of rushing waters and his eyes of blazing fire. My friend, the trumpet will soon be heard and you'll discover that Satan is a liar. If you're reading these words or hearing these words and have not been washed by the blood of God's precious son, repent and be cleansed before it's too late. The spirit and the bride say come revelation 22 17 the spirit and the bride say come and let him who hears say come whoever is thirsty let him come and whoever wishes let him take of the free gift of the water of life remember we don't earn it's a gift it's a free gift it's not of works lest any man should boast Okay, I love you guys. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Regardless of what's going on, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Okay? I know it's hard sometimes. I know it's hard. And keep looking up. You know, these skies are looking marvelous. They really are. The moon and, I mean, you're going to miss it if you're not looking up. You're not going to miss the rapture, but you're going to miss the beauty of the skies. All of creation is just glorious right now. So, you know, if you're feeling down or discouraged, step outside. Step away from those that are, you know, no one can make us feel a certain way. But there are some situations that we have to be in. You know what I'm talking about sometimes that you have to detach yourself from. And you just go ahead and do that. Detach yourself from the person, detach yourself from the situation, and just go and worship the Lord. Okay? I love you guys. I'm praying for you. And, you know, soon this is all going to be over. And we're going to be looking in our groom's face. Look at Tootsie. She is. She's confirming like something is going on here. <laughs> she usually just lay in there. Uh, she is alert. That's very rare. She's alert. But anyway, I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Um, Till next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.